Aegis Slash, Dark Typing. While I certainly won't deny the possibility of the other two forms being Dark Typing as well, for Aegis Slash, it comes down to its in-game and anime dex entries where it outright states that it can utilize its spectral powers to control and manipulate people and Pokemon and willingly drain the life force of others. This is even showcased in the Pokemon Adventures manga where an Aegis Slash was able to possess Shauna, numerous Sky Trainers, and even the residents of Vinnevale Town. Honich does say something similar like this as well, but that could be interpreted as a form of self-defense since the wording implies that it does not like anyone touching its hilt and merely responds with that action as a survival instinct. In addition, it does evolve through the Dust Stone, a stone that is known in Japanese as the quote, Darkness Stone, having shadows as dark as can be, and used to evolve other dark type Pokemon like Murkrow into Honchkrow. And if it's any consolation, its shiny colors could be a reflection of a dark bloody sword with the black and red shading and coloring, since all shiny forms are handpicked by the developers as people in the community have uncovered through the game data, all confirmed by particular game developers. The Malamar line, water typing. If both their designs aren't obvious, they are clearly based on squids or cephalopods and cuttlefishes. Inkei likely from the inkfish from its English and Korean name etymologies, as well as the Japanese flying squid from its Japanese name etymology, and Malamar likely from the vampire and Humboldt squids since they both possess the ability to illuminate light from their body. By the way, Malamar's English name etymology in particular contains the Greek word for mollusca, a type of marine organism, and the Latin word for sea, which is self-explanatory for why. All this may explain why they are both in the Water 1 air group that contains Pokemon that can live both on land and in aquatic locations, and the Water 2 air group that contains Pokemon that primarily live in the water, which, funny enough, makes them one of the only few non-water type Pokemon to be in this group. Despite them learning little to no water type moves, unless you count Liquidation and Rain Dance, they both can be found near water in the core series games like Azura Bay, Pony Gauntlet, Westlake Axwell, and if we consider side series games, there's the Lentil Seafloor and the Maricopia Reef, to name a few. And even in New Pokemon Snap, Inkei's Photodex entry mentions how anything that lights up or emits an echoey sound in the water, it instinctively reacts, implying that it can inhabit the water as mentioned before. The Dragology line, Dragon and Water Typing respectively. To start with Skrelp being part dragon, unlike other similar aquatic Pokemon that could be part dragon like Magikarp and Feebas, Skrelp can learn a fair amount of dragon type moves already, probably stemming from its evolution Dragalge. It is also known for being based on weedy sea dragons, if their designs wasn't obvious, which is likely where its dragon typing would stem from, as it is the case for Dragalge, and may as well be why it is categorized in the dragon egg group, which contains Pokemon who are based off creatures that are considered dragons in other cultures. Now for Dragalge, the water typing derives from the fact that upon evolving, it still doesn't drastically change where it chooses to inhabit and what it's inspired from compared to Skrelp. As noted in its name etymology in all available languages, it maintains a connection to Kelp, a type of seaweed, and Algae from its Japanese, Korean, and Chinese name etymologies that grow in shallow waters where it's found, and this is reflected in the games where you find it in aquatic waters such as Ambret Town and Silage City via fishing emerging from the water in an ambush encounter in Pony Breaker Coast, and swimming in the Insular Sea and Honeycomb Sea. This is even the case with weedy sea dragons who inhabit the water, and this is stated in its text entries where it mentions it is very tutorial in the sea. Even in the anime, it further states that Dragalge resembles drifting kelp when swimming with the current. It also is probably the reason why it is also categorized in the Water 1 air group that contains Pokemon that can live on land or in aquatic locations. Plus, it also learns a great amount of water type moves already, like Dive and Surf. In fact, it's one of the few non-water types to be able to learn the move Flip Turn, a water type move. The Colossian Guja line, water and poison typing. For the poison typing, they all likely take inspiration from the quote, Blue Dragon Sea Slug, a real life gastropod that can eat other venomous hydrozoans, such as the Portuguese man of war jellyfish, tentacle by the way, and stores the toxic nidocytes, the cell that can deliver powerful stings, from them for their own use against future prey. Meaning that the sticky liquid that the line protrudes throughout their body could be interpreted as toxic liquid. 
In fact, this is exactly the case for slagoo, in its text entries referring to how its slime or mucus can dissolve or melt anything as a way to protect itself from predators, and even uses this on potential prey. This is no different to other similar poison type Pokemon that refer to their poison type attacks as being able to melt away thick metal, Dragalge being a great example. Plus, Slugu even learns Acid Spray, a poison type move upon evolving in addition to a fair amount of other poison type moves. For the water typing, if it isn't already so obvious, the entire line has connotations with the water. Obtaining a Guja requires it to be in a moist environment while it's raining or foggy that's also shown in the anime. They all learn an abundance of water type moves already such as Surf and Water Gun. In fact, Guja even learns Aqua Tail, a water type move upon evolving. They all possess the hydration ability, an ability mostly associated with water type Pokemon. The locations in the main series games and side series games where they can be found are also associated with water. Gumi is mentioned to reside in damp places such as Outerway Cave. And both Slagoo and Gumi can be found in SOS battles in the rain, Route 14 in Kalos, and the Soothing Wetlands to name a few. Even Guja's entry from New Pokemon Snap mentions that it likes to live near water in caves. Gumi's dex entries also describe its body as being mostly water, which could arguably constitute for the body composition of the other two evolution forms too. The Gorgeist line, Dark Typing. This one can be attributed to both their in-game dex entries. Gorgeist and Punkaboo are much akin to Dusnor, whereby they take children or adults to the afterlife, much like common depictions of the Grim Reaper. The larger sized Gorgeist and Punkaboo are mentioned to take the souls of adults, possibly forcefully, and the smaller sized ones take the souls of the small children. Punkaboo is even stated to have the ability to control and hypnotize others with the light emitted from its body, which could be implied for Gorgeist as well since it is an evolution of it, and as shown in the anime how they both draw in victims. Gorgeist seemingly appears to have a cruel nature as it even states that it enjoys the suffering of its prey when wrapping its hair-like arms around them through singing that was also mentioned in the anime dex entries. This very scene can supposedly inflict curses onto others that hear it when willingly wandering town streets at night. Hell, it even supposedly drags you to the afterlife upon answering the door to one of these or even falling for one of their acts of imitating children to capture more victims. Its connotations to being more active at night could also indicate a potential dark typing since this can be attributed to other similar dark type Pokemon such as Murkrow, Sableye, and Darkrai to name a few. And even locations it can be found in that can also tie into a dark typing such as Outerway Cave and Darkland Chilling Graveyard, in addition to Ponkaboo's Protodex entry mentioning it too. Their bodies are even implied to be made up of lost souls from within who admit cries of suffering in the afterlife and the quantity of them constitutes to their different sizes. And while they get a few amounts of dark type moves, their wicked and cruel behavior is represented both in their shiny colors, having shades of black, and in its French name etymology containing the word fear to describe a fearful pumpkin. The Neuvern line, dark typing. As suggested by their official designs, especially with Neuvern having those black shadings and name etymologies, they appear to be based on bats. Noibat from the Pipistrelis gene of bats, and Noivern from long-eared bats, fruit bats, and leaf-nosed bats, all of which are active at night. And this association can be attributed to other similar dark-type Pokemon such as Darkrai and Sableye to name a few, as well as the locations it can be found in such as Alderweight Cave, Gala Mine No. 2, Resolution Cave, and Terminus Cave among others. Neuven's dex entries in particular state its personality with varying phrases, saying it has a violent disposition, hot-headed, and an aggressive and cruel nature which is responsible for it tormenting helpless victims at night before feasting on them. Definitely not the kindest thing in the world. In fact, this aggressive behavior was even depicted in the animated miniseries Pokemon Generations. Zygarde, 100% form, flying typing. Despite the fact that I could not see the other two Zygarde forms being any other type with sufficient evidence personally, Complete Zygarde could at the very least be flying type, partly due to its serpentine-like appendages surrounding its shoulders having been confirmed by the official Pokemon website to be wings, much like Beedro and Hydreigon, among others. In fact, in the anime, like in the XYZ finale, movie 19, episode 1 of the Pokemon Generations animated series, and the Pokemon Adventures manga with it battling the Krosma, this exact form is seen capable of flying in the air when in battle using what else? Its wings. And yes, this is despite the fact that it gets little to no flying type moves, but still, nevertheless, this is contentious. 
And funny enough, this form could even be seen flying in Sword and Shield when having it follow you. Though this can apparently only happen through hacking as any attempt to reduce Zygarde's health below 50% will automatically be restored after the battle, surprisingly. Both Unbound and Confined Hoopa, Ghost and Dark Typing respectively. For Confined Hoopa, the Dark Typing should be added to it since in its dex entries, it actually states it's a troublemaker and thiefster even before turning into its Unbound form with such a selfish disposition that it sends anything it likes and or desires to secret places using its hoop. It is even categorized as the mischief Pokemon. It is even possibly inspired by Nerja, a Chinese and or Taoism deity in folk religion, where it was commonly referred to as a trickster deity. In the Pokemon Adventures manga, it even caused trouble for Emerald and Steven by attacking them for startling it. And in the Hoopa Unbound movie, it showcases mischief on Ash and Pikachu further supporting this point too. For Hoopa Unbound, the ghost typing should return as it's inspired from Jin spirits which some depictions of it take the form of a ghostly figure with the wisp-like tail, much akin to confined Hoopa. It is even categorized in the Pokedex as the Jin Pokemon which supports this theory. In addition, its tail and horns may also derive from common depictions of demons. In fact, seeing as Unbound Hoopa is Hoopa's true form, it could be argued that not much changes as it transforms its nature, personality, abilities, except the Unbound form having more power, so the original reasons for Confined Hoopa being a ghost type should apply to Unbound Hoopa. Plus, both forms even learn a large amount of dark type moves already. Volcanian, Ground Typing For what is suggested by Volcanian, the possible ground typing can be inferred to the fact that in its dex entries, it is stated to inhabit mountains, which is a characteristic of other ground type Pokemon that like to inhabit dry locations like Lavatar, Camerupt, Graveler, and Cubone to name a few. Its signature move and type combination may be an indication to geysers which are commonly found near active volcano areas, which does link back to its name etymology containing the word volcano. They are a geological feature that are associated with volcanic locations and as such require three geologic conditions which Volcanian fulfills. Intense heat, water, and a plumbing system as shown with its mechanical cannon-like arms. Plus, it even learns a fair amount of ground-type moves already, particularly Scorching Sands, a move attributed mostly to ground-type Pokemon. All this may be a stretch admittedly, but the connections are there. <laughs>